Hi guys, my name's Ellie, welcome to my channel, and today I want to play with this. This is the Urban Decay Electric Palette. It is one of my favorite colorful things, and I want to use a bunch of it on my face. So, I have a plan. I don't know how much of it's going to work, because I just... I got weird, and I thought about how I really haven't used color and how I went in this big color phase of buying a bunch of colorful makeup and now that I have a job with more restrictions on my appearance I was like oh I'll use my color on the weekend and I haven't and I don't know if it's just because my day to day is a little bit more neutral which even then um, my, my work makeup is still not particularly neutral it's just a different set of colors more like if I'm going to do a color it's going to be like a pastel color or like a jewel tone as opposed to like a neon bright oh there goes the lid for my primer I'm putting on eye primer right now by the way just because I I have a couple things we could talk about while I do my makeup and I've also realized that I don't oh no <clears throat> that's right out of reach let's get back in I'm in a weird mood, so. I don't know if it's just because I've been doing day-to-day -day makeup that's a little more casual, a little bit less bright, or if it's just because it's winter. Like, it could be that come spring and summer, I'm going to want to do all of my bright looks on the weekend like I thought I was going to. Or if I'm just getting old. Because I have my birthday this week. I am now 29. It is the last year of my twenties, and it was it was weird. I don't know. I feel like I should be more sad about getting older, but I'm just not. I'm getting older. That's that's all there is to it. I don't. I'm not like mourning my youth. There's like a tiny part of my brain that's like, oh no, my younger days. But I like who I am now. I like how I've gotten to who I am now. I like that I'm significantly more confident. I was, I was a really awkward, anxious child and teen and first half of my 20s. So getting to a who the fuck cares point took me a while and so that's that's something that me and the boyfriend talked about on the ride to my birthday dinner and he's like oh man I wish I was young again I'm like I I don't it would be entertaining to be younger with my same current mentality but I don't have that I didn't have that I don't have a history of being confident I don't have a history of not caring what people think and having gotten there I'm excited. I'm in a stable relationship with somebody that I care about who cares about me and treats me quite well. I have a nine to five job that I find pretty easy. I have, I'm still filling out my coworkers. That's a story for a different day. Cause like, like 70 to 90% of the time we're on the same page. We're good. And every once in a while they'll say something like, we're going to have to file that away for later because that was a weird reaction, but I don't have time to deal with whatever you're doing right now. Which we will we will discuss that later. We'll decide if I ever want to do, like, weird coworker stories. Because I don't think they're likely to find my channel, but you never know. And some of my previous coworkers have expressed interest in finding my channel, so uh, I don't know if we're going to do those because it's the kind of thing where they very well might recognize themselves in the stories. So, ooh, other thing I brought over, I also brought over my Distortion Glitter Liner from Urban Decay, which I kind of want to put over the first half. So, I have now put primer on my eyes, I've put a cream shade, crease to brow bone, and my little Bare Minerals Satin Pigment on my brow bone. I think I also have a color switch just because I don't know 
how many times I'm going to want to use the same brush for something. My plan. I have a plan. I kind of want to either use the pink or the orange in the crease, maybe both, like maybe like one in the outer half, one in the inner half. And then I want to do the mint into the pink into the purple across my mobile lid. And then I might do the blue and the blue and the teal on my lower lash line. I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm doing with this one, and I don't know what I'm doing with this one. And I don't know if I'm making it a, like, every color in the palette challenge, because that kind of died down. But I don't know. Maybe we're doing every color in the palette. Yeah, let's do that. That's how you make choices. <laughs> but yeah, that's part of the thing I was thinking about. Okay, okay. So we're going to take Slow Burn on the inner half of my upper crease. So, the orange. And let's just put it down before I panic. Yeah, let's put it in here and just kind of swirl the brush and make things happen. So, I really like these colors. Um, I would never have picked this up. And I didn't pick it up for a very long time because it was so bright and I didn't know what to do with it. And then I started getting into um, the beauty community on YouTube and being like, oh, maybe. And I started seeing all the gorgeous looks and getting a little bit more comfortable with my appearance because I, I didn't wear bright colors or loud patterns or anything for a long time just because I didn't think it was me. Turns out I, I had feelings about how people were going to perceive me which I hadn't come to terms with yet. Oh, that's so gorgeous. See this? I'm still so sassy about why the fuck they would discontinue this palette when it's gorgeous. And they haven't done anything since then to really fill this bright, colorful hole they left. And they should have. Now that I've just put huge patches of color on my face. Let's get a different blending brush. Let's take this one. I'm going to pick up the pink, which is Savage, and put it on the outer half of my crease. And just kind of blend the two together. But I also don't want to take it too far below, because I'm going to put blue down there. And I haven't decided how I'm going to pair those into the same look. Oh, that's so nice. These colors are very pigmented, they're very true to color, and they're very blendable. So again, I don't know why, like, unless it got insanely heavy on the, the profit margin to get these pigments or something, they just, maybe people all bought it and then nobody was buying it because they were nervous like I was back in the day, but... They're just gorgeous colors. Um, some of them stain. I haven't had that much of an issue with staining. At least nothing that... I'm, I'm wearing makeup. It's never something that is a problem, because I'm going to put makeup on it most days. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I think I just kind of forgot how much I like color, and now I'm putting it on my face. The other thing with color is that it is hard to get blends even with bright colors that do stand out that much, but it just doesn't matter. It's just not that hard to just say, I don't care if it ends up even. I don't care if it's a little different. I'm going to start with Urban. So I put, those are the two in my crease. This is going on the outer section of my lid. Yeah. And I think Urban's one of the ones that stains for me. So, the lack of fear about aging, it might just be a me thing. I've always been 
excited to do the next thing, to get old, to get to different points. I am super excited to be like an 80 year old woman with a bunch of piercings and tattoos and a pink mohawk and just, I'm so ready for the complete lack of fucks that I'm going to give when I'm old, old, because I'm getting old. But there's like old for your young perception of yourself. So hitting the end of my 20s, that's something teen me would have seen as old and whatever. But actual old, I'm talking like 60s plus. I'm so ready to be like that weird drunk person that gets into trouble at family gatherings and causes mischief and I feel like that's gonna be fun. I feel like the older you get, the less you care about what people think of you. And I'm already not caring a ton, so let's just keep it going. So I'm just fuzzing out the edge. That was the other thing that was a little weird for me about picking up this palette, is I didn't realize how well so many of these colors were going to pair together. And I wasn't prepared for it, but they're beautiful. Next, we're going to take jilted and kind of pack that on the center of the lid and leave some room for freak on the inner third. I have a habit of overlapping colors just to start on the blend. So you see how I put that purple basically halfway over the eye and then this is going to go into the section of both to make sure they blend together nicely. That is a color combination I used a lot, is the pink with the urban and jilted. They're so pretty together. And now that I have more colors in my collection and I'm more confident with using colors, these colors make a ton more sense to me, and the, the way they picked them and which colors are supposed to pair and which colors are easy to pair makes a lot more sense. Now that I've played with color. And this was a great, this was a fantastic gateway palette to using brighter colors. Because any one of these in, in comparison with an otherwise neutral look would be great. Like this orange to kind of smoke out a lower lash line with an otherwise just kind of neutral warm look. Fantastic. The pink as a pop. Fantastic. The purple kind of like paired with a, a gold. Fantastic. This like purpley pinky shade fantastic put uh, a mauve around it put a light lilac on the inner third it'd be gorgeous and I think I think that was where this palette really did some fantastic choices is its ability to be both a bright color and like a pop palette back before we knew how much the pop effect was going to take hold of certain things. <sighs> Next is Freak, and I want to put that on, yeah, on the inner third, this right there. <sighs> I'm getting a little bit of color transfer there. I'm wondering if that's where I'm going to put Thrash. I might put Thrash there. I think we're just going to do that before I change my mind. So. Third blending brush. Thrash is this one. And we're going to kind of rock it here. Just to fuzz out the edges of the orange and tie into the blue that I want to put down there. So. And that's another color that I was really not super sure I was going to want to use. And... I quite like it. It actually makes a really nice tint. Like if you want to make something just a little bit more sickly, a little bit more greeny golden, it helps a lot. And like I think it's pretty meant to be sheer. And it does turn out decently sheer, but it still does have that lime color to it that Oof. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's finally put 
freak the green on my inner third. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I like it. So yeah, I think if I could give myself the same no fucks attitude and all of the fun of my younger body with none of the aches and pains of old age, I was also thinner when I was younger. We're working on that. We're getting back to being a weight I would like to be. Yeah, I think there are, like, there's benefits to going back and having a different perspective on different interactions and, like, how you would do things differently if you left high school or something knowing exactly what you want to do and exactly what your career path needed to be to get to a certain spot. It could be interesting, but just overall, I just don't miss being young. I'm just not that interested in the obsession with youth. I'm going to take a little bit more of Jilted and kind of blend in that green. Make sure we don't lose it. Yeah. Because there is just this obsession as a country, and honestly, in most places of the world, of young and the, the amazingness of being young. And I think there are a lot of benefits to age and experience and the attitude change as you age. A lot of the things I do now, I would not be comfortable with as a younger person. The going to concerts and not really knowing the band. I go to way more concerts now than I did in high school and a lot of that is because I thought I had to know the band. I thought I had to have a formed opinion about the band before I got there. And you don't. Just show up. Have fun. That's it. That's all you need. I'm actually really liking this color story. More than I was expecting. I want to put a touch more freak. Because it's, it's really bold in person. But I feel like it's not necessarily coming across on camera. And maybe it's just that this one's a different angle. It's not popping. Makes me feel like it's less opaque, but it isn't. It just, it just needs the angle to look all of its glory. Okay, now we get going on the lower lash line. So I'm going to start with Gonzo. And I'm just going to smudge that with this angled brush. I'm just going to put it on the lower lash line. And I think I'm going to deepen it with Chaos. And then put fringe really close to the lash line. Like that's a blue. <laughs> it just kind of ended up as just like a swath. I forgot this is not the biggest blending brush. It's more of just a swipe of color brush. I also kind of want to be careful with blue because if I blend it too far, it's going to be crazy anyway. So a little bit of color blockage isn't the worst. And to think I thought I was going to run errands tonight. Not with this on my face. Not to go to the grocery store to pick up just like an onion. Okay, so then this is Chaos, which is a deeper blue. Just making it super blue. Kind of popping that up into the outer corner to blend the bits together. I'll take 
with a pink color and just kind of swirl it out here. I didn't put any more pigment on the brush. I'm just working with whatever's left over and the blendability of what's already there. Okay, so. Then, ooh, that's not the brush I want. I want, where are you? This guy. I've really been liking this flat, smudgy brush for, like, putting color down here, which normally it's to make it more defined, and the blue is already kind of big. But I'm going to take fringe and pop that on the lash line. So, yeah. I'm more excited about the things that are coming than worrying about the past. I'm excited to get more into my job. I'm excited to move forward with the boyfriend. I'm excited to get a house. I'm excited for us to do things and I'm not worrying about Oh, if I was younger. Oh, if I had whatever back. Because I have some plans for this year. I'm going to have a lot of fun with my last year in my 20s. That's the attempt. I want to do more things with my friends. Because I've... I used to work with my friends and now I don't, um, so I want to make time for them so we can go out and do specific things. I want to... Tattoos. We are getting into tattoos. I realized that um, one of the things I want to do is a pair of um, song lyrics on my ribs, and I realized that it's not including one of my favorite bands. One of my favorite bands is Panic at the Disco. And one of the quotes I already picked out is from Fall Out Boy, and I kind of had a bit of a falling out with Fall Out Boy. I'm a little sassy. So, I thought I could potentially shift that over to a whole different one. I was like, oh, which one do I want to pair it with? Do I want to put it in 21 Pilots? Because they're another band I've since grown a lot of affection for. I'm keeping the Fall Out Boy lyric, because the lyric itself is gorgeous. I'm going to take this silver revolt and pop it on the inner corner with this itty bitty detail brush just as an inner corner highlight, and hopefully it'll play well with Thrash. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna take it a little under here. Yeah, so... I really like the lyric that I had already picked out for that section. So I'm not losing the Fall Out Boy lyric, but I did decide I did definitely want a Panic at the Disco lyric. I picked it. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is so I can get the tattoo first and get everything done. Uh, and I decided that I wanted to make that a whole separate piece and that I hadn't thought about putting things on my thighs yet, which might just be some of my leftover body image issues that everybody has. I am not a slender lady. I am not a small person. I also forgot I had this. So let's just put that over the mint. Actually, we can probably blend it over the first half of the eye pretty well. Let's put some glitter on. Um, I'm not a small, delicate lady. My thighs have never been something that I was, like, super excited to show off. And since then, I've kind of decided that I like them. They're part of my body. I want to use them, and I don't care if they're lumpy. I don't care if they're not smooth and properly shaped. I don't care. They're my thighs, and my thighs are good. So, I think that has opened up that area as a place I might put tattoos in a way that I hadn't previously thought about. I've thought about, like, curling stuff over my hip. I've thought about having stuff, like, run down my thigh to get to my calves. But I think we're going to put something there. So, I picked the quote. I think I'm going to potentially do it as, like, a banner of writing with the lyrics on it that kind of swirls over and in and out of a skull. 
and I don't know if I'm doing the skull black or gray or if I want to do it as like like blue and purple with like pops of indigo and turquoise I don't know because I have this mentality of I should have all of my tattoos planned out placement planned out and be sure they all flow together before starting anything but I think I think what I want to do with that tattoo would be easy to tie in depending on how the other one turns out the one that I want because I have a plan for like um like a half sleeve into a back piece curling down onto my hip wrapping around my leg like I want a lot and since I want a lot and it's going to cover a certain area and I don't always like I I'm not mad at other people having patchwork tattoos but it's not something I want and I have a big like anxiety stress reaction to thinking about getting a tattoo putting on a place and then down the road realizing that I wanted something else on that place and that place isn't available for that tattoo that I might want more than the tattoo I have and so we just need to get over that so I'm pretty much keeping the space that I think the big one's gonna go like I'm not getting much done on my back until I know how that big piece is gonna go but having something on my thigh either on like the side on my hip or on the front on the middle of my thigh I like that and I think with the tattoo as it's gonna turn out and as the lyrics that I picked I think it's gonna work really well for that placement and then once I have it and it's healed I think I, sh I can show you guys because the other one that I'm most likely gonna try and start getting is something that I wanted as my starter tattoo um, which I'll tell you guys because it's not a super unique tattoo it's been done a lot there is a book I read called Kushel's Dart that I read um, early 20s because a, a good friend of mine suggested it and it was fantastic. It was really, really good. It was a really good series that I enjoyed a lot. And part of the book is that uh, the main character is an escort, a, a whore. She has sex for money. And part of the, in that fantasy environment, part of the training and apprenticeship for becoming uh, your own person out of, what is it? Out of your apprenticeship was to earn money towards this huge, elaborate, personal back piece that each one would get. And once that was finished, your mark was, um, your mark was proof that you were your own person, that you'd earned it, that you'd done all the work and effort to create your own place as your own entity. You weren't in apprenticeship, you were done with your training. Um, and she has this gorgeous one that they've done a lot in the art that is this, like, deep burgundy blood red type rose with these twisting thorns. And it's really pretty, and I like it. And it means a good thing from the story. I'm having feelings. <laughs> because it, it's a big part of the book, and it's a big part of the story arc and everything. And I really like that. I don't want it as a full back piece. My friend does want it as a full back piece for herself. Um, which I think is going to be gorgeous. I think it's going to go really well with the shape of her bone structure and everything. But since I want to do the other stuff with mine, I thought that would be a nice thing to get as like a starter one. And it is um, a design, at least the the art of the design, because, you know, it's a book. It's on the cover art, but it isn't like it's not like drawn out somewhere inside the book. The design is something you can compact down. So I was thinking about getting it for my first tattoo in my bikini zone as just like a nice little thing so it it both is the stereotypical rose tattoo in a hair place you can hide and then I can see if I react well to tattoos if the ink sits well how they heal how how I heal them you know if I have any issues with the healing process if I have a reaction to it if I just absolutely fucking cannot stand the feeling of being tattooed I know with something much smaller that I'm not worried about. There's only so many people that are going to see my lady bits that if I have a tattoo down there that turns out doesn't go anywhere else, I don't get any more tattoos. It's not the end of the world. So that was my, my first tattoo, the test tattoo um, that I have not got yet. So we're going to have to get that one and then work up to, I think the next one's going to be um, the panic tattoo. Because I would like to get the ones, my, my lyrics on the ribs, but I also might 
want to get further into my weight loss journey than I am before getting that done. So I'm thinking early summer will probably be the, the test head to, uh, which if you haven't read the book, the book's called Kushel's Dart and it's, it's great. If you, for a long time, it was what I was suggesting whenever anybody was like, oh my gosh, Fifty Shades of Grey is so good. And I'm like, I got something better. Hey, Fifty Shades of Grey is trash. <laughs> the the writing, the story arc, the character development is trash. It is not a good representation of a relationship, let alone the BDSM community. If you want something with much more creative sex scenes, a much healthier view of the BDSM community, and much more interesting characters and plots, read Kushel's Dart. I will probably, if I remember, hopefully put a link to just the book somewhere down in the thing. Do I have... I have some of them over here because um, she does a lot of different um, stories in the same universe. And I had some. Where is it? Oh. <clears throat> She's on my to read book, but this is a different one by her. So, Jacqueline Carey. This is a different story from hers that I haven't read yet. But it's called Kushel's Dart. And I enjoyed it. And I think it's a good one. It's a combination of romance and fantasy that. It's not your traditional romance, it's, it's fantasy with a lot of sex. <laughs> and I think it's much more healthy for people to read that type of a portrayal of those things than Fifty Shades of Grey. So, if you are interested in more BDSM romance type things, go that route. Not Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades is trash, it's unhealthy, it's a bad representation. Oh. So yeah, that took a very strange turn. I'm going to finish up my face and we'll do the end result. And depending on my energy, I'm probably not going to, like I could potentially do some lashes with this, but I don't think I have the energy for lashes. I do have to go for a walk still. I'll be back. We're done. This is the finished face. Um, I put more glitter on just because I was having fun. I did a highlighter, blush, lips, all that fun stuff. Yeah, you can see here how bold the blue ended up it's not very blended out i don't care about blending it out this is just that's the look it's not like i'm doing anything today and it's not like i care what people think about my appearance so yeah i actually really like it i would definitely do a variation of this and wrap around the bottom i want to do more with the blues i need to figure out how i want to use matte bright blues and this is fun i had fun hopefully it's fun for you guys too I did a lot of rambling. That's just, that's just, I think that's just what I do on this channel now. Hopefully you enjoy it. I have to go for a walk and take an Instagram picture before the light fades and I brushed my hair to try and make it all straight and now it's staticky at the sides. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time and happy last year of my 20s.